Hi, my name's Simon. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the React Behaviour tool for Unity 3D. Once you've imported the package, you'll see there's a demo scene included. Let's press play and I'll explain what it does. The little red guys, you see them turning around. As soon as they spot the green guy, they run away and try and find a place to hide where the green guy can't see them. So if we move that little green guy around here, you'll see that as soon as they spot him, they'll run away somewhere different, trying to hide from him. If we look at each enemy, we've got a nav mesh agent on them so they can move around the scene. We've got a simple enemy script, and that contains functions which we use within the reactor. The reactor has the enemy AI behavior tree as an asset in this variable here. You see if we select that, it's present in our project. We can right click it, choose edit reactable, and we'll see the tree here which controls the behavior of the enemy. Now if we take a look at this tree, it starts off with the selector sequence and then it's got a parallel. Now if we open the um, the reference we can see that a selector will run its children in order returning a success on the first child that succeeds whereas a sequence while it does the same thing by running the children in order it returns a success only if all the children succeed go back to unity so the selector notice the selector look it up in the reference it runs its children succeeding on the first child to succeed so if this sequence succeeds the selector will return and it will run again starting at this sequence and the sequence notice the sequence it runs its children in order succeeding if all children succeed or failing on the first one which fails so, this is a condition. Can I see the player? If this fails, the sequence will return. And the selector will then choose to run the next one, which is a parallel branch. If we look at what that does, the parallel branch runs its children simultaneously. And it can be configured to exit as soon as a child fails or succeeds. So in this case, until success, we check, can I see the player? So while this is false, as in they're hidden from the player, it will continue to run this action, which is turn left. Now as soon as they can see the player, this will return. And it will then run this sequence, where he checks if he can see the player, and if not, he moves to a random position so if he does see the player, he will move to the random position. But we've got a decorator on there which says that can only take two seconds. So that's a very basic behavior that each of these enemy AIs is running. So notice they turn until they see the green guy, and then they run away, stop, check to see if they can see him again, move. And this guy here, it's not having a good time. But eventually he will find a spot where he can't see the green guy anymore. So he's going to stop here and check. And it appears he's hidden from the green guy. We can check that by going to the scene view. Focusing our green guy. And you can see, yes, he's all the red guys are fairly well hidden from his view. So the last part of this puzzle is the actual simple enemy script on the enemy character. Now let's uh, edit that just so I can show you what it does. The important parts we're going to look at are this method here and these actions. Now notice the signature is public ball can I see player. Now that's got some logic in there 
which does a ray cast and checks if the enemy has a clear line of sight to the player. And it returns a false or a true, depending on that. The other methods we have are turn left and move to random position. Turn left looks much like a coroutine. It just keeps rotating the enemy slowly about the axis so that he turns left. Move to random position uses the nav mesh and picks a random position and then attempts to move to it. And it looks just like a coroutine as well. And because these methods have these signatures, they appear in the editor. If we choose a condition node, sorry, this is an action node, the actions are listed here. And this is a condition node. You'll see conditions are listed here. These other methods have the correct signature to be shown up as a condition. Now the editor itself, it's the last thing I'll discuss, it's fairly easy to use once you've uh, got a handle on how it works. Um, you can add child nodes to these blue branch nodes. So we can add a, any of these nodes to this parallel node here just by selecting this button. So it's going to run another action here. Now notice it's spread and that means it's um, selected and it's chosen the default uh, first action there. Now we can say we want that to have a time limit, we can decorate that with a time limit and then set its value here. And we can drag that and drop it to reorder it if we need it. And of course we can right click, delete, duplicate, cut, copy, paste, etc. So that's a very quick overview of React and how the editor works. Uh, any questions you can email me at support at differentmethods.com.